Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Clearwater Fishing. And today we're talking about how to find and catch those late winter crappie and uh, fill your boat full of fish. If you haven't already, right now is a great time to subscribe to the channel. I cover all sorts of fishing topics, including fishing technology, all the way to how to catch your very first fish, to using LiveScope, the video game fish, those crappie. So lately I've kind of gotten some cabin fever and I have been stuck in this house because of the snow and the freezing temperatures that we've experienced here in Texas. So we're doing another recording in the studio, but don't worry, we got lots of great information to share today. So let's start off by what do I define as late winter crappie fishing? So late winter to me is the time between the coldest temperature the water is going to reach that year until about 50 to 55 degrees, just before the pre-spawn occurs. During this time, we have kind of a weird weather pattern usually throughout the United States, and we'll have days that are in the 70s, sometimes the 80s, and then we'll, again, we'll have days that are in the 30s. So we're gonna have a mixed mash of weather patterns as we move on into spring. Now, I want you guys to remember throughout this video that crappie are structure-oriented fish, so they like to hang around structure and what I mean, structure and cover, uh, that is trees, brush piles, rocks, and even sometimes that is bait fish. So they could be falling around a school of bait fish as well. During this time of year, crappie are focused on three different things. The first is they're focused on food. The second is oxygen. And the third is they want stable water temperatures. They don't want large fluctuations in their water temperature especially toward the cold side. So let's first, let's talk about their food. Well, during this time of year, they're not eating a whole lot because they're not using a whole lot of energy. Crappie are cold-blooded fish, so their environment actually determines their metabolism. So the colder the water, the less likely they're gonna wanna eat. As far as oxygen goes, well, during this time of year, cold water holds a lot of oxygen. And since their metabolism isn't that high, they're not all that worried about finding high oxygen content water because typically it's pretty good for them this time of year. So we've already eliminated that they are not probably chasing a school of bait fish around and they're probably not searching for high oxygen concentrated areas. So what does that leave? Well, they're looking for stable water temperatures. And where do you find stable water temperatures on a lake? That's typically in deeper water. So you're not gonna be fishing really much of anything 15 foot or less. I would specifically search in areas that are 15 foot and deeper because those water temperatures are a little more stable, especially when we have those really hot days going to those really cold days. So in the next part, we're gonna throw up a little bit of a map here and I'm gonna talk about kind of the strategy that I have when I'm searching for these crappie. If you haven't already, I have a video about how to use side imaging and down imaging to search for crappie. So be sure to check out that video. I have it up in the cards above. All right, so we have here a picture of an area that I typically like to fish. And I know that there's structure here because I scanned it many, many times. And I usually scan by it two or three times and look for some of the larger schools that hold some of the larger fish. And while I'm scanning through here, I always like to look at my down scan or down imaging and kind of determine the depth that these crappie are going to be. And the area that these trees are located in, uh, the, the depth of the water is 25 to 30 foot deep and the trees are between 20 and 25 foot tall. So sometimes you'll have some treetops poking out of the top. And just a little tip from me to you, is if you could see the tree from the surface of the water, it's typically overfished and you might wanna skip on those trees. Uh, the trees that are submerged and you can't see, you wanna to stick to those brush piles and trees and rocks because those are less likely to be fished. So once you determine your depth uh, that those fish are located in and you have a few trees that you've marked either with a buoy or with your unit and you know about where those fish are, time to hit the spot lock button or anchor down and let's start fishing some of these areas. So let's uh, talk about a few strategies to go after these fish. The first strategy, which is using a moving bait, 
you always want to be thinking slow during this time of year. These fish are not very active and they're looking for a very easy meal. So the first moving target bait I would like to use is a jig that's very lightweight. So a 32nd ounce, a 16th of an ounce, and even lighter if possible or needed. So a little technique here to help you uh, determine that you're fishing the correct depth you've already identified in your down scan and down imaging is to determine the fall rate of your jig. So you have a rod that you know the length of, it's written on it. So have your line out that far, usually a 10 foot rod or uh, estimate about 10 foot and then drop it in the water real fast. And then once the line becomes tight, that's how long it takes for you to drop that amount of feet. So you wanna be counting when you drop, drop it into the water and you can do your counts from that. So I like to estimate about 10 feet so it's easy math. I'll drop it in there, I'll count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then it'll be like five, six, seven, eight, maybe even 12 Mississippis to get down to the depth that I want to. And sometimes I'm a little impatient for that, so I'll use a jigging pole that's 10, 11, 12 foot long. I'll have my motor spot locked or we're anchored down somewhere. And then I'll have a eighth ounce jig on there and I'm gonna be dead sticking it out there in front of these crappie. It gets down faster, gets down to them faster and I'm just gonna be holding my jig pole very, very still because they're looking for a very easy meal. Now what kind of colors do I like to use during this time of year? Well, I like to stick to the more natural colors. Uh, the first being like a blue and silver color, uh, maybe a blue and white, maybe even just a white color. Uh, I also like to use some of the greens, uh, green and white, but not very, very dark green because most of these fish have been deep for a while. So they're all gonna look very, very pale and kind of washed out in their color. So don't use any very, very bright colors because they're gonna know, well, that's just not right. So as we progress later and later into the winter and the water temps start to pick up uh, closer to that 50 to 55 degree mark, well, I'm gonna start taking some time and searching those shallow areas. I'm gonna do the same type of thing. I'm gonna scan around. I'm gonna scan those areas and see if there are some crappie on some of my shallower structure. When I mean shallower, I mean 15 feet and less. If you scan over these uh, structure spots in the middle of winter, you probably won't be finding any crappie or any fish on the shallower structure. Uh, you'll see the structure and you'll be like, wow, there's absolutely nothing on that tree. It is bare to the bone. But the reason that I uh, take time to look at those areas is as winter releases its grip and the water temps do come up, well, you're going to find the hungrier and more aggressive fish on those shallower spots because they are closer to being in pre-spawn than those fish that are deep. And they're getting ready to move up on those shallow areas and start their spawning cycle. So there is actually one other scenario that you might find during this time frame where there's not a whole lot of fish deep and they're not really shallow either. Well, you ran into that day or that week time frame that they're kind of in between that, those two areas and they're moving. Uh, they're either following bait fish or it's possible if the water is above 55 that they're already moved up shallow. So you gotta be careful and identify your water temps and where your fish may be. Uh, different lakes, uh, fish do spawn at different temperatures, but we all have the range that we know that those fish spawn at. So be careful that, hey, you're not trying to fish deep when they're actually moved up spawning. But if you find them that they're not in either area, uh, the likelihood, uh, if they're below, the water temps below 50, uh, the likelihood that they're actually spawning is pretty low. So you're probably gonna have to chase some uh, schools of bait fish around. And this is the time of year that spider rigging becomes real big because they are pretty scattered and they are searching for food and trying to feed up for their spawn. So you can spider rig for these fish or if you have a live sonar such as live scope, active target, or the soon to be mega live imaging, uh, you can chase around certain schools of fish and be able to catch a few of those as well. Hey guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Uh, and I hope you guys learned a few things from this video and are able to load the boat up full of slabs and have an awesome fish fry. But just like always, until next time, get out there and go catch you some fish.